Hi, I'm Ted Wright from Epic Archaeology, and today we're going to talk about Patterns of Evidence, the Moses Controversy. So earlier, we made a video uh, talking about the non-spoiler edition uh, review, sort of just overview of the film, and now I'd like to sort of dig a little bit deeper into the film itself and talk about uh, some things. So uh, if you have not seen the film yet and you don't want any spoiler alerts, even though it's not like a, a superhero movie, uh, don't watch this film, watch the other one. But if you're interested in uh, kind of knowing some analysis and some more uh, deeper thoughts on the film, uh, then and please uh, stay tuned as we continue to talk about this. Let me just uh, kind of give a little bit of an overview. So uh, four years ago, uh, Tim Mahoney uh, created a film called Patterns of Evidence, The Exodus in 2015, in which he explored the dating of the Exodus. And I was really excited about this. In fact, I actually wrote a blog article on it. And if you want to know more about that, I can send you the link for that. Um, but one of the things, the concerns that I had was that uh, at the end of the film, you're a little bit confused as to whether exactly when the exodus occurred because there's about you know at least three dates that are thrown out there and it was a little bit unclear he did talk about the early date and the late date and then you had uh, uh, David Roll which we'll talk about here in a moment uh, but one of the things I did like about the first film is the fact that it uh, Tim Mahoney the director uh, sort of uh, the film was really kind of about his own personal journey he was he had sort of a crisis of faith you know he grew up in the church and grew up listening and reading stories of the Bible and he had questions as to you know well is there even evidence that this existed and so the film sort of follows his journey as he explores this question as he interviews scholars and things like that so this was in 2015 this new uh, film that just came out uh, we premiered just uh, this week and if you haven't watched it yet there's still some premiere dates coming out. So uh, this explores the question of whether or not Moses could have written the first five books of the Bible that we call the Pentateuch. So uh, this again takes the same form of the earlier film in which Tim Mahoney sort of uh, shares his journey. And so this is where I'd like to get a little bit personal. And I think this is some interesting parallels. So Mahoney tells the story about how he came to a crisis of faith. Uh, he went to college and, and began to listen to his professors, and they began to say, well, we're not sure if this really happened or not. And he had a crisis of faith, and so he began to explore whether or not the Exodus uh, actually happened and whether or not Moses could have written the Pentateuch. So uh, the second film, Moses Controversy, explores this question. Well, this sort of parallels my own personal journey. So many years ago, uh, when I was getting my degree, uh, undergraduate degree in archaeology, I had a similar uh, experience. Uh, like perhaps many of you, uh, maybe you're in college or maybe you watched a documentary or something. You're like, well, you know, I'm a Christian. I grew up and I read the stories in the Bible. But I'm not exactly sure if these stories are true because there seems to be some counter evidence that this is the case. Well, it's, that was my experience when I was an undergraduate archaeology student. And so I began to explore. And very interestingly, this, is, this has been several years ago, uh, I actually began to explore this question. And one of the first per, uh, people that I found, writers that I found, that was actually defending the historicity of the Exodus was a British scholar by the name of David Roll. Uh, now, that's interesting because David Roll figures very largely in the first film. And uh, he wrote a book uh, called uh, A Test of Time that was published in the UK several years ago, in which uh, uh, Roll actually, who's an Egyptologist, who argues for the historicity of the Exodus, but his argument is based on the readjustment of Egyptian chronology by uh, several hundred years. So what's interesting is that uh, since that time, I've become friends with David Roll on Facebook. And David, if you're watching... How you doing? And I really appreciate your work. Um, but uh, David also figures in the second film as well. So Tim Mahoney uh, actually uh, interviews David Roll. They talk about the new chronology that David Roll proposes. Uh, but then I began to read some more material and began to uh, explore. And I discovered the work of another scholar by the name of Doug Petrovich. And uh, Doug is actually featured in the second film as well. Now, there's some disagreements between Doug and David. And, uh, and I know that they... Uh, uh, of course, I think you're on pretty good terms, but they have some disagreement about some of the finer points. But they both agree that Moses could have written the Pentateuch uh, early on in Israel's history. Now, this whole film centers around the question of, of whether or not Moses could have written the first five books of the Bible. This means we have to go back and talk about why that's the case. Why do scholars today not think that is the case? Well, it goes all the way back to the 19th century uh, to a theory 
or a hypothesis rather, that was uh, uh, put forth by a German scholar by the name of Julius Wellhausen. Now, he wasn't the only guy to writing about the documentary theory, but uh, he, the most popular version kind of came uh, about through Wellhausen. All the way back then, even up to today, scholars today kind of follow the documentary hypothesis. And th this essentially is the fact that Moses could not have written it because the dating of the Exodus really doesn't match anything we see in history. And there were probably four or multiple independent authors who compiled together the first five books that we call the Pentateuch. Now, that's what scholars hold to today. Uh, one of the main reasons they hold this view, again, is because of Wellhausen, but also because of archaeology. And one of the things that uh, they explore in this film is the possibility of a, an inscription that was found, or several inscriptions that were found, in the Sinai Peninsula called the Proto-Sinaitic Inscriptions. This is where the work of Doug Petrovich comes in. Doug actually uh, has made the connection between the ancient Egyptian language and uh, modern Hebrew and, and believes that there is a connection between the two. In fact, his proposal that's based on his book is that uh, Hebrew is the first alphabetic language, which would have meant that when Moses wrote down the Pentateuch, he could have written this in this uh, particular kind of language. The uh, film explores this possibility. Of course, they also uh, talk to the critics and those who are skeptical of this as well. Uh, two scholars that I mentioned earlier uh, in the previous uh, film that we shot or in the previous uh, little review that we shot was uh, uh, Dr. Bill Deaver from the University of Arizona, who's now retired, and then also Chris Rolston, who is at George Washington University. Both of these scholars and Another scholar in Jerusalem uh, completely reject the idea that the earliest language could be Hebrew. Now, why do they reject this? Well, there's multiple reasons, and we can't really know exactly the full reason why, but one of the main reasons why many scholars today reject that Moses could not have written the Pentateuch and it comes up again because this is the question that was explored in the first film, and that is the dating of the Exodus. Several years ago, an Egyptologist by the name of James Hoffmeyer uh, said this, and, he, and I think he's absolutely right. He said, the Exodus and conquest stand or fall together. So wherever we find the Exodus, we're going to find the conquest as we understand the Bible, we're going to see this in Israel. So whenever you look at the between the two dates, you've got the early date and the late date. Well, whenever you begin to plug in those dates and you look at the archaeology and the history behind them, the only place where we find evidence for both the Exodus and the conquest together is in the early date, which is about 1446 B.C. This also matches what the Bible states in 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 and other places. In fact, the 1 Kings 6, 1 statement basically says that uh, 480 years after or before Solomon laid the foundations of his temple, uh, the Exodus occurred. So when you do the math of that, uh, most scholars believe that uh, Solomon laid that foundation around 966 or 967 BC. And so that puts the Exodus date at approximately 1446. So when you begin to look at the evidence of this, you begin to see uh, patterns emerge uh, of an Exodus. Also, when you begin to look at Israel, when you read the biblical account of the conquest, there are only three cities that the Bible states that the Israelites destroyed. And they are, there are Jericho, uh, Hatzor, and Ai. Uh, and that's actually the other way around. It's Jericho, Ai, and Hatzor. So that's the quenchly how it worked. And there's evidence that Jericho was destroyed. There's evidence that Ai was destroyed. And we'll talk about that there in a moment. And then Hatzor was destroyed as well, exactly as the Bible states. Now, behind me is a picture of a site that I've excavated in Israel called Kerbet el Makader. And uh, it is of a late Bronze Age Canaanite fortress. And uh, in 2014, I had the uh, honor of being there and excavating with the Associates for Biblical Research, uh, directed under Dr. Scott Stripling. For about 15 or 17 years, uh, ABR, with the team there, uh, excavated there in the west, near the West Bank city of Ramallah. And uh, the evidence is overwhelming that this indeed is the biblical site of Ai, destroyed exactly as the Bible states. There is a fortress, there is a gate pointing north. In fact, there are about 12 or 13 uh, biblical and geographical requirements for this to be the site of Ai. So all that to say, this fits together with the scenario that we see 
uh, in the patterns of evidence that point to the fact that the Israelites came out of Egypt approximately 1446 BC. This brings us back to the original uh, uh, issue, and that is the dating of the Exodus and also the fact of whether or not Moses could have written this language or in these in this proto-Sinaitic script. Here's where it gets interesting, and this is where the film really does a good job of explaining. And you'll, when you see the film, you know what I'm talking about, and that is uh, these inscriptions appear. Uh, approximately when we think the Israelites come in, into Egypt and they appear in the Sinai Peninsula at a place where the Egyptians would actually mine uh, turquoise in these turquoise mines in the Sinai Peninsula. Now, when they disappear is when the Israelites go into the Promised Land or into Israel, into Canaan. We see the language go with the Israelites. So it actually, the language matches the history that we see of ancient Israel. This is just quite remarkable. And uh, I want to really applaud uh, Tim Mahoney and his team uh, at Thinking Man Films for doing an excellent job and for really... Uh, highlighting this vitally important question. You know, in apologetics, uh, we talk about a lot of things, and uh, one of the things that apologists don't talk about a lot uh, about is the Old Testament. And so I'm very delighted to see that Mahoney uh, covers this issue of the mosaic authorship of the Pentateuch. And really, this is a major issue. This is a major topic. And I think a lot of us are not quite fully under, don't quite fully understand how important and how critical this issue is. This actually goes back to the New Testament. And Jesus actually, in John chapter 5, he's talking to the Pharisees. And he says, he says, if you will not believe Moses and the prophets, then you won't believe me either because Moses spoke of me. And then later in Luke chapter 16, Jesus told the story about the rich man and Lazarus. And you remember the story where uh, the rich man wanted to have Father Abraham come back, send, send Lazarus back from the dead so that he could warn his brothers not to come to this place of torment. And uh, Abraham says twice, he says, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. And then the, the rich man said, no, if you, if you will just send Lazarus back from the dead, then surely my brothers will believe. And they say, if they will not hear Moses and the prophets, they will not believe, though one rise from the dead. So Jesus places a lot of emphasis on the historicity of Moses and the historicity of the events of the Exodus. So at the end of the film, there's a little bit of an uh, overview by a panel discussion, and it's included Oz Guinness is in there, and you have Michael Medved, and you have Tim Mahoney, who is the director, and uh, I think Todd Starnes is on there as well. And one thing I want to say, it's very interesting, and I'm really glad to see this, is that uh, there are actually more films in production currently as we speak, and they are going to be talking about in the next couple of films, which I'm really excited about, they're going to explore the location of Mount Sinai, also, and the Red Sea crossing and where that might be. So I'm very excited about this. And so uh, looking forward to uh, seeing what uh, uh, Mahoney has in store for us and to uh, see if whether or not this uh, there's any evidence uh, or patterns of evidence that this actually happened. I'm very excited about this film and I hope you'll go see it. And I want to highly recommend this uh, to you and your family, your church group. Uh, if you're a seminary student, if you're a college student, if you're a skeptic, uh, don't uh, dismiss it just uh, offhand. Go check it out. Look at the arguments for yourself. And I think you will be pleasantly surprised at this amazing evidence that the stories in the Bible are based on actual history and that we can trust God's Word down to the last little smallest jot or tittle. So I'm excited about this. I want to encourage you to go check it out. And again, uh, you can read a little bit more about this uh, at our website, epicarchaeology.org. And if you uh, are on Facebook, you can follow us on Facebook. Thanks for those of you who follow us already. And we're excited to be producing these films and uh, stay tuned for more to come. But thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you around sometime at a conference. Take care.